Jeremiah chapter 17. We will begin reading at verse 1. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with the point of diamond. It is graven upon the table of their heart and upon the horns of your altars. Whilst their children remember their altars and their groves by the green trees upon the high hills. O oh, my mountain in the field, I will give thy substance and all thy treasures to the spoil and thy high places for sin throughout all thy borders. And thou even thyself shall Discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land and not inhabit it. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be a tree he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat cometh. But her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. As the patriot sitteth on eggs, and hatches them not. So he that getteth riches, and not by right, shall leave them in the midst of his days, and at his end shall be a foe. A glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. O Lord, the hope of Israel. All that forsake thee shall be ashamed, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth, because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. Heal me, O Lord and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For thou art my praise. Behold, they say unto me, 
Where is the word of the Lord? Let it come now. As for me, I have not hastened from being a pastor to follow thee. Neither have I desired the woeful day thou knowest that which came out of my lips was right before thee. Be not a terror unto me. Thou art my hope in the day of evil. Let them be confounded that persecute me, but let not me be confounded. Let them be dismayed, but let not me be dismayed. Bring upon them the day of evil and destroy them with After sermon, we will sing Psalter 281. Let us read again our sermon text this evening from the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 17. We are going to read verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. You think you are strong? You think that your mental capacity is strong enough to secure your happiness in this life? Then think about this event more than a hundred years ago. There was a most luxurious ship in a voyage to America from the UK. The ship was considered most unsinkable as it had 16 watertight compartments. So even if there is flood in some of them, the ship could still be afloat. About 2,000 people were on board in that April, and the name of the ship was known as Titanic. When the ship hit the iceberg about midnight on 14th April 1912, the ship began to sink. Within less than three hours, the whole ship sank to the bottom of the sea and almost 1,500 people died. The unsinkable ship sank indeed after it hit the iceberg. It was a great tragedy. What is more disappointing is that there were not enough light bulbs for all those people on board. Otherwise, people could have been easily saved from that cold seawater. Worst of all, there was a liner in the sea at that time, about 22 miles away from this ship Titanic. And the radio operator who was supposed to be in duty in this liner at that time was not working. So all these SOS messages sent from this Titanic could not be received. And the liner couldn't come. If you were in that ship on that night, where would you put your trust? 
Would you put your trust in the most cutting-edge technology to build a ship? Would you trust the captain who was considered to be the most experienced one in those days behind the helm? Would you trust the skillful man who built the ship and prepared all those light boats but were never enough to cover all those people on board? Would you put your trust in that radio operator who was supposed to be on duty in this liner? The ship with the most powerful and gigantic look for which cause the ship was named Titanic could not be trusted on that day. Men and women cannot be given full confidence as we see in this horrible event. The scripture before us today specifically asks you whom you trust. Then the theme this evening is, whom do you trust, man or God? We will consider with the Lord's help two simple points under this theme. First, the curse that we do deserve. Second, the blessing that we do not deserve. First, let's look at the curse. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm. God pronounced this judgment through prophet Jeremiah. At that time, the northern kingdom was already swept by Assyria. The southern kingdom, under the leadership of Josiah, the young king, was going through reform, but it didn't last enough. Soon, people were tempted to trust in man. As the Babylonian kingdom was about to invade, people were looking for helps from other big countries like Egypt or Assyria. The cause of fall in the southern kingdom of Israel was trusting man and flesh. But this spiritual cause is still relevant. It is timeless to all humanity. The word trust is the key word of our text. This key word can be good and it can be bad. It is used in the Hebrew Bible 155 times. If it is used with reference to the faith in the Lord, it could give us true happiness. But when it is used in connection with the wrong object, its result is detrimental. It's disastrous. The object of faith determines the value of faith. There are four things at verse 5. Number one, the man under curse trusts man. This man is in his nobility and power.
power. He thinks he is strong because he trusts things of man. He thinks that his wisdom can be most reliable. He thinks that his physical might can protect him. He thinks that his riches can buy him even eternal salvation. It appears that in every way there is something to trust in man. Because of all these things of man, he claimed to be strong. He is standing there not knowing what he was before. He was just a mere creature made out of dust. Number two, the man under curse makes flesh his arm. What could the arm mean here? Arm means the symbol of activity, the human strength. This man believes in human effort. He thinks that he could earn salvation by doing good as much as he doesn't deviate from the law, as much as he exerts his power to keep the law, he thinks he can be saved. He is just following his natural instinct. His salvation is based on what he does. And his salvation is based on what he doesn't. The Bible says about this man, cursed is everyone that continues not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Galatians 3.10 Number three, this man's heart departs from the Lord. It is obvious because he has other things to trust, such as his own ability, his own riches, his own effort. He doesn't hesitate to abandon the Lord. His departure from the Lord is willful and intentional and even confident in doing that. One commentator said that man and flesh designate the totality of all earthly visible forces in antithesis to the spiritual power of the invisible God. Once your heart is toward those visible things, and visible forces around us, it continues until you depart completely from the invisible God. Lastly, this tendency to trust in man and flesh and to depart from God is natural phenomenon of us all. Whether you like it or not, you are born in that state. It is the problem of our innermost being of who we are. Our heart is incurably sick in that way. Verse 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? This deception of human heart 
and its resultant separation from God is common in all natural men and women. One American poet during the 19th century said this, Nothing can bring peace but yourself. This strong idea of trusting oneself has been always supported by numerous natural men in the world history. It is because their heart is deceitful and they were deceived by their incurable heart from their natural birth. Thus they trust in man and left God willfully, stubbornly, and audaciously. They think still they could do something for their own salvation. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and make flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from the Lord. What is it that you are trusting this evening? The very New Year's Eve. How much can you do if you can? How good can your outcome of your labor can be? What can we do more even in these last few hours of the year? Let's see what is going to happen to all those who make flesh his arm. This spiritual condition is vividly described through a physical picture and the observations can be made at the following verse. Verse 6, For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. First, the man is like a heath found in a desert. A heath is like a dwarf shrub. You would see no water source around the shrub. It is not relevant how much the plant tried to find the water. There is simply no water. Second, the shrub therefore cannot expect anything good. There is no security. It cannot have any confidence in anything. If it has any confidence, the confidence is unfounded. It is false security. Proverbs 26, 19 says, Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. Third, Nothing grows in that desert because the land is not inhabited. No life is found. The little shrub is found all alone in the midst of the desert, dry and salty wilderness. Children, you all have experience of growing a pot at your home. What's going to happen if you don't water the pot? The plant, first of all, will show the dryness and the root will go away, die, and the leaves will wither and nothing from the soil will be carried to other parts of the plants. This is the picture for the cursed man, there is no joy in this land. It's probably the most 
the dullest picture that you could ever imagine. The dryness and the barrenness. And no matter how he exerts his power, nothing is really born as a fruit. There is no vital sign. It's just dry. No joy. No communion. No fellowship. Living relationship in it. This curse is based on the very relationship between you and the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, would you continue to trust in man and flesh? Would you stay departed from the Lord? Would you continue to abandon the Lord? Several years ago, I was privileged to go to attend an ordination service in Canada. On my way, I spotted a building like a church, but when I looked at it, it didn't look normal because it was um, decorated with all kinds of skulls and witch images, probably in the month of one of the months in fall. And, but as I look closely, the, the church, it was a church building, meant to be church building, but it was turned into something else, completely different. How sad it is to see people in our days living the church and ultimately living the Lord in such a way. Oh, my friend, I urge you tonight to cast out any confidence in anything of this world. Turn your undivided heart unto the Lord. Cursed be the man who trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm and whose heart departeth from the Lord. If we are only given these first two verses alone, we would not have any gospel. But the Lord indeed gave us a completely different picture. Our second point is the blessing that we do not deserve. Listen to this. Blessed is the man who trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Verse 7. Who is said to be blessed? The scripture is not only very clear about which one is to be cursed, but also which one is to be blessed. He is still the same person in the sense that he was created out of the same dust. He thinks he is strong. He still trusts, but this time, his object of faith is not man, but the Lord. He is the one who trusts in the Lord. This Lord is such a great God who created heaven and earth. He is almighty God. So this man thinks he is strong because he trusts in the Lord, not man. His object of trust is the Lord. His faith is not false but real because it is God himself that he trusts in. When God becomes the single object of his heart and trust, God pronounces blessing. He trusts God again and again. He hopes against hope. In time of affliction like this, in time of difficulty like this, 
This man's hope and confidence is not taken away from God. Even when nothing good is seen at the surface, his hope is not still scattered. It is because this trust is in God who is the foundation of all good things. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want is his language and confession. As long as he is with the Lord, he will miss nothing good. He trusts no human strength but God's power. No human wisdom, but God's wisdom. No his own self, but God himself. He knows firmly the fullness of God is wiser than man, and the weakness of God is stronger than man. 1 Corinthians 1.25 As a result of this unceasing exercise of trusting, his hope and trust cannot but become God himself. There is inseparable bonding between this sinner's heart and the Lord. In his innermost being of who he is, there is the Lord. Blessed is the man who trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Dear congregation, on this New Year's Eve, how are you doing spiritually? I know that it is not, it is easy to say that you trust in God when everything seems to be sail, sailing for your favor. Your health, your business, your children are all good and fine. But can you say that you still trust the Lord alone when you are the very one who are suffering at this time? When you are the very one who are hurt? Other people looking at your situation may say, where is your God? They may even say in extreme cases like the wife of Job, are you still maintaining your integrity? Curse God and die. We all know that faith is not one day, one week, or even one year event. In the days of prosperity, in the days of affliction, we are still called trust in the Lord. We are called even to participate in the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ as believers. You wouldn't choose to suffer, but when you have to make a decision between the world and the Lord, you will rather choose the Lord even at the expense of suffering and affliction. In the darkest moment of life, let the Lord Invincible, immortal, immaculate, invisible, and infinite God remain to be the eternal hope in your heart. Never stop trusting in the Lord. God is not ashamed to be called the God of those who trust in the Lord. How can you describe this blessedness of the one who puts his trust in the Lord. Just look at verse 8. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters 
and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. We can make two observations. First, this blessed man is like a tree planted by the waters. This means something huge to trees as, as they cannot take any nutrients from soil without water. It might be intentionally transplanted there to be close to the waters. Once this plant wasn't found by the water, but in God's providence and His sovereign will, this plant was moved to be closer to the water. The source, water, source of water is constantly there. It is like a river of a stream. For this reason, the tree does not fear when heat comes. Even when the year happens to be drought, the tree does not worry. This is true security. The tree is safe. Second, the tree would not fail to make fruits. Its plenty green leaves and strong roots will result in making fruits in the life of true believers. There are fruits to be born. The fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, faith. It shows all kinds of different colors and Vital signs in it. Dear child of God, if your trust is the Lord, you have such a great promise as written here. You are like an evergreen, ever fruit producing, ever joyful tree. The Lord is the object of your faith, and this will surely prove that your faith is true. The Lord is the fountain of the living waters to you. Continue to trust the Lord. Calvin says, God's children are not exempt from advers adversities. It says, the scripture says that you will not fear heat and the season of drought because the moisture will constantly be supplied to your roots. Thus, you can overcome those suffering by unceasingly trusting the Lord. We believers may go through tough time for our sanctification. We are not perfect at all until we departure from our earthly flesh. We will grow in sanctification through suffering, but we don't fear necessarily. The Lord promise, promised a lot to each child of God. What does the masses of Jeremiah mean for us today? There are three applications. First, you unbelievers come to Christ right now. God spoke through this prophet Jeremiah and pronounced curse and blessing. There is one here tonight greater than Jeremiah in his cursing, in his blessing. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, 
And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth upon him. John 3.36 Cursed is everyone that continues not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. My friend, the year has already passed. We can't reverse what we did. All the sins we committed in this year in thoughts and words and actions. No way for us to pay for those sins that we already committed. Even though we may tonight be summoned before God into hell because of our sins, we can't pay back for our sins. We all know that. When Jesus Christ died upon that cross, when he cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He knew for whom he was suffering. He was not suffering for his own sins. He was suffering for his own people. For sinners like you and me, Jesus Christ is the very Savior by whom our eternity will be determined. Second, believers, each of you must make self-examination to your own heart tonight. There is no middle ground between the curse and blessing. All humanity falls either under curse or under blessing. Each one of you falls under one of these two. Ask the Holy Spirit to illuminate your heart that you may Truly know whom you trust. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own heart. Proverbs 3.15 The word of God is powerful like two-edged sword. God is searching your heart tonight. Third, in this pluralistic society, you think that you can have faith in God plus something else. But the scriptures before us today clearly speaks to us that our trust cannot be divided between God and something else. God and something else will lead us to utter destruction. The blessing is exclusively for those who trust in God alone. For example, you all know what is written in the American Bill. It says, in God we trust. But do you really trust God more than your money? In a Do you not trust God plus money? Again, there is no middle ground. Solomon says, The rich man's wealth is his strong city. Proverbs 18.12 It is written, No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Luke 16, 13. Therefore, trust in the Lord alone. 
the disastrous failure of man at the expense of more than a thousand people may be vanishing in your memory after more than a hundred years. But we should remember this and do not be deceived again as we look back this past year. We are reminded of God's never-changing word. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we remember thy name on this day and we acknowledge of our sins in this past year, especially in not trusting thee alone. We ask thee to guide us still on this day with thy power of the Holy Spirit, that we may meditate upon these words on our hearts until we fully trust Thee. Lord, it is our prayer in these last hours. I will not let Thee go until Thou bless me. Lord, turn us unto thee, and we shall be turned. Lord, save us, and we shall be saved. O fountain of the living waters, we ask thee, Lord, to bless the gathering tomorrow still one more time in this house. Remember Reverend Justin Noble as he brings thy message in the New Year's Day. Bless him and his family. Forgive our many sins. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We will sing to God's praise, Psalter 281. Mindful of our human frailty is the God in whom we trust. He whose years are everlasting, he remembers we are dust. What follows is Psalter 281. <laughs> 